prediction that Ali radiallahu anhu he will travel to Iraq. Yeah, let's talk about Ali radiallahu anhu in general as well. I mean, won't spend much time on it, but his basic life history. Uh, what this prediction means, I will get into it. But Ali radiallahu anhu, he was a very special person to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He was, yeah, he, he was the cousin, obviously, because of uh, relationship with Abu Talib. He was the son of Abu Talib. And, you know, Rasulullah grew up in the house of Abu Talib, right? And when he grew up and he became 25 years old, he got married to Khatija radiallahu anha. And at that point, when he got married, uh, Ali ibn Talib radiallahu anhu was uh, born. And he was about, uh, you can say, two, three years or, or five years. Uh, at that time, what happened, a great famine came in Mecca. Because of that, many people became very poor. And Abu Talib was also, he had a very large family and his situation, financial situation, because of that famine, became very bad. So Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, when he, he, when he got married, he was very good uh, you know, uh, financially. And he wanted to support, help out Abu Talib. So he requested Abu Talib that you, know, you took care of me. I want to take care of your son, Abu Talib. So he brought Abu Ta uh, sorry, uh, uh, brought Ali into his home. He was about five years old at that time. And so now for Ali radiallahu anhu, Prophet is like a father figure. He, grew, he grows up. He grew up in his house. So what happened eventually when the Rasulullah became a prophet, he was about 11 years old and he was the first male ever to accept Islam, first male. He was a child, so basically the, many of us know Abu Bakr or Zayd ibn Thabit, Zayd ibn Harith radiallahu anhu, as, but, but uh, among the males he was the first one. As a child, he was a child, so that's why there's a difference. But uh, eventually what happened? You know, there are many stories that I can mention, but I will jump to um, how he was, he made the hijra. And then he, the, during the time of battle of Uhud, he was about, you can say, uh, 25 years old. At that time, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the, the uh, you know, the permission came that Ali radiallahu anhu should marry Fatima radiallahu anhu. You know, he always wanted to marry Fatima radiallahu anha, but because he was so poor, he was always shy to express his desire to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. Obviously, he's a prophet, and she is like the prophet's daughter. So Allah subhanahu wa taala made it easy, and he helped Ali get married Fatima radiallahu anha. And immediately, I think one year, very next year, Hassan radiallahu anhu was born. And after that, one year passed by after Hassan's birth, Hussein radiallahu anhu was born. So all these things happened. And eventually, before, uh, you know, you can say that one year before the death of Rasulullah sallallahu he was told by uh, Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa to go to Yemen. Uh, Yemen, you know, south of uh, Saudi Arabia, to give da'wah, to spread Islam, to help Muslims there. And people really loved Ali there, Ali. Obviously, when you see a person of such akhlaq, such piety, such courage, such bravery, and such knowledge of Islam, they got so much impressed by him, they, they loved him so much. And eventually, uh, Rasulullah passed away when he was about, I think, uh, 30, uh, 34 years old. And it was a big shock for him. It was a big shock for him because now he, he was like a father, he was a cousin, and he also was his son in law. So, Anyways, he eventually, you know, fast forwarding, he became the fourth Khalifa, all those, uh, you know, battles that happened. And what happened after that was, there was, uh, uh, the, the, the fitna uh, came out about this new groups and the killers, the murderers of Uthman radiallahu anhu. We mentioned this story. He decided that he should move to Kufa because why he wanted to move Kufa is because all those people from Yemen who really loved him during the time of Umar radiallahu anhu, all these people, many or thousands of Yemenis were uh, recruited in the military, Islamic military, and they moved to Iraq, the Kufa, the newly founded city by Umar radiallahu anhu. 
So Kufa was a very strong base and people there really loved Ali radiallahu anhu. And he wanted to go away from Medina because, you know, he noticed that Medina is like full of fitna right now. People who are new to Islam, they are making a lot of, causing a lot of trouble there. So he said, I should preserve the caliphate, should not let Islam get ruined. I should give it a break here. I should move from Medina. I should go to Kufa. So that was his concern. So he decided to move to Kufa and he was, when he put his feet on the leather stirrup and he was about to go on the horse in the Iraq, uh, to Iraq, to Kufa, Abdullah ibn Salam, who was a, f a famous uh, Sahabi, radiallahu anhu, he told Ali, radiallahu anhu, do you remember what Prophet sallallahu said once? He said, uh, do not go to the people of Iraq, for if you go to them, you will be afflicted with the tip of the sword there. You will be afflicted with there. And Ali radiallahu anhu remembered that by Allah, the Prophet sallallahu indeed said that to me. He said that to me. He remembered it. it. Basically, that was a hint to Ali radiallahu anhu that a time will come when he will have to face the situation. So... And that did happen. Ali radiallahu anhu, he chose to, you know, preserve Islam and he didn't really worry about his life. He said that was the right thing to do. I have to go to Kufa. And he went there. And all these battles happened. Battle of Nahrawan happened and we discussed how all the Khawarij got killed in that battle. But there were few people who managed to escape. And that's what the problem happened. The people who escaped in that battle, one of them was Abdul Rahman ibn Muljam the Khawarij and he wanted to take that revenge how come how uh, dare Ali kill all of us thousands of people I will take revenge so same happened history repeated what happened to Umar radiallahu anhu same thing happened to Ali radiallahu anhu so one time in the mosque of Kufa uh, he goes to offer Fajr prayer and this this uh, Muslim, you know, Khawarij were Muslims, but they, as we said, there was something wrong with their ideologies to the ex extent that they would kill other Muslims. So what happened? He got a sword and he coated it with poison, basically. And when Ali radiallahu anhu who went into sajda, frustration, he basically hit him. And that basically was very severe. He was a strong man, Ali radiallahu anhu, but uh, he lived for two more days and after that he passed away at the age of 64 years it happened around 40 hijri year so that was Ali radiallahu anhu so Ali radiallahu anhu was very famous by the way you know in the battle of Khaybar someday we will cover it his bravery he was uh, you know he did uh, his bravery really came out on that day how you know he was chosen as commander of by uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa and he led the army. Many people could not defeat the, you know, the Khaybar people. And what happened? He asked those uh, Khawarish to make a duel, to do a duel. You know, he gave dawah to them. They didn't listen. And first, he asked one of the Jew to fight with him. And the, there were two brothers who were very, very strong, and they were known. That it was their record that they never lost a single battle, a single duel. Ali radiallahu anhu killed both of them one by one. And, and you know, just a few days ago, he was suffering so much that he couldn't even see because of that uh, eye problem that we discussed before and how Allah, uh, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa cured that eye disease. But anyways, from that time onwards, he was called, uh, he was called uh, Asadullah, the Lion of Allah. Because he, Allah, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa gave him that title because of that battle, that victory of uh, Khaybar. So that was Ali radiallahu anhu and how the prediction came true that what Ali radiallahu anhu would have to go through. So, and by the way, his sword was known as uh, Dhulfiqar. It was two two-edged sword. There was a special sword that he had. It was very famous.